Hey, how's it going? I have a really, really cool tip for you today. And it's kind of this hidden feature. It's called Frame Mesh. And it works with curves, ZBrush curves. So any brush that uses a curve, you can utilize this tip with. Are you ready to see it? Let's go. So we are in ZBrush now. This is my custom user interface. If you're interested in getting this interface, I give it away for free over on my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. It comes with my free brushes and my ruler file. You can check it out over there. Okay, so let's get going. So I've prepared this specific cylinder for you so I can show you all the different types of ways that frame mesh will throw curves onto a mesh of yours that is set up in a specific way. Now, I want to show you why frame mesh is so cool, okay? For example, if I were to get a regular curve brush, so if I hit B, C, and I'm just going to grab, let's say, this curve multi-tube, and I start drawing on the surface, and then draw off, it makes this kind of fun, curvy little tube, and you can see in the middle of this, there is a curve, that black and red dotted line in the middle. That is a curve. And this brush utilizes the curve functionality inside of ZBrush. But if I were to try and draw a curve around the circumference of the cylinder, it would be very, very difficult to do that by hand. So um, I want to turn off mirroring because mirroring doesn't really work with the curves very well if you're trying to do that. But I can do the, do the best I can trying to draw around the outside. And yes, it's going, sometimes it goes to the inside, sometimes it goes to the outside. It's just it's very difficult to manage by hand. That's where frame mesh comes in, okay? And basically, it will throw curves on your mesh in a specific controlled way. Like I, the freehand way to put curves down is a lot of fun, but it's just really hard to control. So if you go into stroke and you go into curve functions underneath stroke, you'll see this big button right here. It's called frame mesh. Now off to the right hand side of frame mesh, you have these three options. You have border, which is an open edged border. And then you have poly groups, which are essentially just poly groups. And then you have creased edges. So it will look at all three of those things if you have these checked and it will put a curve around in between those sections. So I'm gonna hit frame mesh and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if we look at this cylinder, you'll see there is a, there is a curve around the open ended bottom here there's a curve around the crease right here. And this has a crease and it's in between two poly groups. And these two are just between two poly groups. And then you have the one around the top. And the reason I wanted to have that one is so when I use a curve brush, you'll see kind of what happens there, okay? So now that we have all of our curves in place, check this out, we still have our curved tubes brush and it will use the current brush size as the diameter of the curve that you're going to throw down, okay? If you click on this curve, you'll see it has now put tubes on all of the curves, which is super cool and very controlled, right? So you can imagine all the possibilities now that you can do with the control of these curves just by utilizing poly groups or creases or open-ended anything. So really, really powerful stuff. Now, I just wanted to show you if I grab the uh, curve snap strap brush, and then I click on the curve, you'll see that it does these really cool straps around this, the edges. It'll put it halfway in and halfway out. And you'll notice this little circle over here. This is on my latest um, update of my user interface for ZBrush 2022, and it will have that on there. And you can adjust this and actually put it above the surface, click on the curve, and it will put it on the outside or you can push it down and just kind of sink it into the surface and click on it again. You'll see it, it sinks it into the surface. Really cool stuff. And now you'll notice that on the very top, you'll see that it's averaged between the side and the top. It's made this, it's laid this down at a 45 degree. That's kind of why I wanted to show you what happens when it puts a curve in between a 90 degree surface, okay? Or a 90 degree edge, if you will. Okay, now that I have these, what I can do is I can um, say, you know, this, this is what I want. I want to keep these. So I'm going to click on the surface and all my curves go away. 
but I have this set up now so the original cylinder is masked and the new straps are not masked. So what I can do is I can go and hit this split unmasked points. You'll find that in the sub tool menu on the, in the geometry. And you'll see that it's now added this as another sub tool. Okay, make sure that both of these are showing. And I wanna go back to the cylinder and turn on uh, dynamic subdivisions. And then I'll go to the straps that I just made and turn on dynamic subdivisions, make sure this is showing. Okay, and you'll see this has been, these are being subdivided, but the cool thing about it, and this is building upon my last video of how to uh, do surface details with that uh, carve brush or the uh, chisel brush, sorry. Um, now you can use these curves to get more detail and more precise curves and more precise uh, chisels or, or valleys in your surface. So now what we can do is utilize live Boolean. I'm gonna turn live Boolean on and I'm going to click on this, uh, this button right here, which is subtract. Now I have my, um, I have my wireframe turned on and that's why you're seeing it this way. I'm gonna hit Shift F to turn that off. And now you can see how these straps are being cut out of the surface. And that surface cut is very, very controlled, very, very precise. So I can show exactly where I want these cuts to be. And you'll notice it's taking on the color of whatever I'm cutting out, right? So let's, let's go to the cylinder and let's choose like maybe uh, just a, an obnoxious kind of salmon color. Okay, and then I'm gonna fill this with that salmon color and then we'll switch to maybe a darker red. Okay, this ugly color, I don't even know. Maybe this one. And then we'll grab these straps. Here, let's make them, let's make them really bright so we can see the difference, like this purple, okay? So check that out, it takes on whatever color these straps are. Really nice, right, really nice. So then I can control that and then when I'm done, uh, the best way to uh, make this something that you can use is by putting these two things in a folder and then running the live Boolean on that folder. Now that's, I'm gonna save that for another tips and tricks video on live Booleans, but for now, I just wanted to show you this really awesome frame mesh reference. I used this on the baseball Zenyatta skin that I made for Blizzard for Overwatch. And I, I made the stitches around the baseball exactly the way I made these. And I made a specific uh, tri-part insert multi-mesh brush, not a mouthful, right? And uh, that was the actual stitches for the baseball. And then I did a frame mesh and spun them around the outside. And that's how I got those stitches. So it's very, very, very controllable. I, there are insert multi-mesh brushes that you can download online from the uh, ZBrush um, insert multi-mesh repository. You can find a whole bunch there. You can do, and you don't have to make them loop on themselves. You can do vertical. You can uh, maybe even lay down a curve brush and delete part of the curve brush that you don't want. Uh, so it's, it, you don't have to make it precise the first time. You can just lay it down and then delete the parts you don't need. So anyway, I really, really hope this is helpful for you. And I can't wait to see what you do with frame mesh. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.